great. There seems to be a lot of these on uh, on, on uh, eBay and other places. Uh, these are uh, duplexers. Uh, they split two frequencies for receive and transmit. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later. But uh, yeah, um, got this for 35 bucks, free shipping. So um, yeah, I don't know how much these would cost new. I, 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 I don't even know if this is actually is. Yeah, it looks like it's used. It looks like it's used. Uh, but I mean, they put them in the instrument or the cell tower or whatever it is they put them there and then nobody ever touches them so of course they're going to look brand new i mean there's nothing there's no active components in these things they're just resonant cavities um so yeah so what are these things well this one um is a cell wave number 5077 uh it splits a transmit frequency of 816 megahertz and a receive frequency of 861 megahertz and uh, so they don't interfere with one or you can listen on one frequency and transmit another frequency and you don't hear yourself um, so that's what these are that's what these are for um, this one is a, a four cavity uh, you can kind of see it here so there's two cavities for transmit and two cavities for for receive and so that'll give you a certain uh, uh, rejection ratio um, they have little tuning slugs here that change the uh, uh, capacitor it's just a, a screw that goes in that changes the capacitance of the of the uh, of the cavity and uh yeah um let me let me take these screws out here and i'll show you some photographs now inside is just kind of uh, a coil and a rod that kind of sticks down that acts as one end of the capacitor the grounded end of the capacitor and that's what you tune with it just changes changes the capacitance changes the inductance I don't, i'm not sure exactly which one or both but anyway it changes the resonant uh, frequency and uh yeah it's just a hollow chamber so it's its dimensions are made to be uh resonant at some particular frequency so uh lower frequency devices will be um, much larger um, and this one, this one is pretty tiny because it's 800 megahertz. If you looked at a like a 144 megahertz uh, duplexer, it's going to be these big giant things. Uh, but this one's nice and small, and uh, we can do some measurements and try it out. I found this one kind of interesting. Uh, it has an end connector as the as the both connector, both transmit and receive, and then the split one. The transmit is on an SMA, and the receive is on an RCA jack, which is kind of kind of strange. But anyway, that'd be fine. Um, let's see what else is there to know. Um, I think we should just uh, go ahead and measure one. Um, now we're going to need to have some adapters here, right? So the uh, all my toys are SMA, so I'm going to put on an N, an N to SMA adapter. Okay, so I'll screw that under there, and then I can just uh, uh, screw uh, this onto here. We'll go ahead and uh, set this up so that we'll put, we'll transmit something and we'll see what comes out. And then we need to uh, terminate the uh, center port at 50 ohm. So I have a uh, SMA to, uh, I mean a um, RCA to SMA adapter. And then at the end of that, a little 50 ohm load. So we are, so we are complete. Um, why don't I go ahead and draw a picture in case you're confused about these things and then we'll do, uh, do the measurement. So typically uh, you're going to have an antenna and you want to use it for both transmit and receive. So we're going to transmit over here and we're going to receive over here. And our transmit frequency is at about uh, 861 and our receive, uh, nope, our transmit is at 816 and our receive is at 861 megahertz. Okay. And uh, so you want to split this up. So this basically is going to go into a uh, into a resonant can. Okay, and I'm just kind of drawing it like this. But uh, these things are actually constructed that there's actually a, a hollow a hollow tube, and you go into the tube and rattle around, and then it gets come comes out, and. Uh, this one actually has a double and a double. Okay, so there, you go into here and you do some stuff, and then you go into here and you do some stuff, and then you come out. So you go into here, you do some stuff, you come out, and you come out over here. So there's these two two cavities, and so 
what you want if you want to draw a picture of uh, of uh, frequency um, versus uh, output level, you want to have the uh, you want to have basically two filters that look something like this, right? So you can maybe uh, transmit here and receive here, and then these two filters uh, will keep each other from from seeing each other. And uh, because these are cavities, uh, these are kind of kind of dip, and then they're going to come back up again and dip and come kind of come back up again. So so hopefully the transmit. Uh, point is exactly where the dip is and this receive point is exactly where the where the dip is that's what you want you have maximum maximum transmission and maximum rejection on the two on the two sides let's maybe make clear if we if we do the measurement all right so we're gonna set a frequency we'll start at uh, 700 megahertz and we'll stop at uh, let's say 1 gigahertz and we'll use the tacking generator uh, we'll do a level of zero dvm we'll turn that on and there we go we see that uh, we have this uh, transmission over here and a dip over here what are the two frequencies that we're interested in uh, marker you, you can you have a marker here but you can actually type in the number so one of the numbers was uh eight one six dot eight six six uh and so it'll put the marker right there. You can see, ah, that was where the, uh, that's where the maximum transmission is. So that's good. Let's see if the dip is on the other one. We'll do marker two and uh, we will set that to uh, one, I mean, eight, eight, six, one dash eight, six, six. And there we go. So. This is where we are transmitting and this is where we're receiving. You can see that we are uh, uh, exactly where we want to be. We have maximum transmission at one frequency and maximum rejection at the other frequency. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, keep this one. Okay. And we'll go to uh, the B trace. And now, oops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap and we'll reconstruct construe this thing uh, let's see we will have the receive on the antenna let's see this is the transmit port now so we'll transmit into the antenna and uh, we will terminate the transmit and move the spectrum analyzer to the receive port And there you go. And you can see that we're, we're just the opposite now. Now we're rejecting over here and have maximum transmission, transmission over there. So that's exactly what you want a duplexer to look like. Um, so I'm going to search some photographs here. I made one of these measurements first with my VNA, my 8712 VNA. And you can see that uh, we're getting the exact same thing. This is the S21 plot of the, uh, of the duplexer. And then... Um, uh, here's a nice picture of what we just showed um, uh, without markers, and then we'll put the markers on it. And then you can also do another view, which is uh, view markers, and that gives you uh, just a list so you can kind of see what's going on here. And if you're curious what that, where that is on the actual instrument, you go uh, marker, and down here it says marker table, and you turn the marker table on, and it, and it gives you... Uh, List of markers at the bottom. So there you go. So that is a duplexer, and uh, there is a uh, talent to setting these correctly. There's two things here. I think uh, I might try that someday, but not in this video. Uh, see if we can't adjust this thing. Maybe move it to a different frequency. Um, see how far how far of a uh, of frequency span that we can change it to. Um, I really don't know how far you can move these things or whether they're just, you just kind of have to optimize them because of the cavity sizes themselves. I'm not sure how far actually you can move them. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's just a quick look at a duplexer.